All right. So welcome to part three of Drupal Crash Course. In part one, we learn to install Drupal and um, use some basic modules and get familiar with the configuration, etc. In part two, we started coding Drupal modules of our own. So now, in part three, we are going to take that story further and um, do some more advanced things with the modules in the module that we write. The module that we have been writing is called to do. So here's the code for our module. Um, we basically have written hook menu and it presents a list of to do's. So let's take a look at our to do list that we have currently. So this is our hook menu exposed uh, route at path to do and this is our menu link. We click on to do list. We are able to create a to do also. So to do three and it creates a new to do. So the way it works is that we have a we have two routes in our hook menu to do and to do slash new which of course creates a new to do bound to drupal get form and a form builder called to do create so the, all this we covered in the last part of this series uh, very important to that last part was hook schema that is included in our modules install file so that's extremely important so the next thing we are about to do is uh, the next thing we will do is we will add a new right now what happens is all the to do's are the same for all users which obviously is wrong so if I look at my database so look at the database and look at the data there is to do ID to do title done status and the creation timestamp but there is no owner uid there is no user that owns the, the to do that's uh, not very desirable uh, the to do should be associated with the user who created it and who's who's tracking it so in order to handle that what we will do is add a new column so let's start with that we add a new column here to to this and then uh, let's see it should be called let's call it um, UID I guess that makes sense so create a new column called UID and it will be this column is described by an array there is a description um, there is a type type I think will be integer and unsigned is true user IDs will be positive only and not null perhaps should be true and then default value. Now by default we want who should we have own the existing to do's. So I would say probably the root user, the admin user. So let's do that. Actually, actually I changed my mind about the default UID. I think uh, if nobody's assigned a UID it should be zero and don't need the unsigned true. Uh, we do need type int and not null true. And for description, I'll just copy paste from my notes. And so this is the description. Another thing that we should do is add indexes 
and uh, foreign keys. Now, foreign keys are not real in the sense that they won't actually be created as foreign keys, but it's still useful to have it for documentation purposes. So we just say indexes, and indexes is an array, and the index set that you specify will be UID as an index, and its value is array containing the UID. So the left hand side UID is the name of the index and right hand side are the columns. Also, we should probably create foreign keys. Again, as I said, for in case of MySQL, it may not actually create the foreign key, but it is still a good idea to have it for, um, for the purpose of documentation. So the foreign keys are going to be uh, the, the one that links the to-do with its author. So which means name of the foreign key is to-do underscore author. The table that we point to is the users table, right? And then the columns in the users table that we link uh, are UID on our side as well as UID on the other end, which means UID here points to UID in the target table. So these are the um, these are the changes to the schema. The problem is the we already have this this table is already present. If I now uh, refresh the table, obviously nothing changes. Even if I clear all cache, so here let me clear all cache, rush CC all, and I refresh the table structure. Nothing really changes. Why? Because Drupal does not look back into the install file. Um, and even if it did, it won't change the, the schema. So in order to force a change in the schema, you have to write an update hook. Update hooks, just like hook schema, are also, they also reside within the, within the same file, uh, which is the dot install file. So let's look at what the update should be. So, So the update hook will look like, you know, something like function hook, which is replaced by the word to do, update, and then a number. This number usually should uh, track the major version followed by like 7,000 or 6,000 or 8,000 and starting with a low number like one, two onward. Um, I'll explain in a second why the numbering should be like this. Basically, um, Drupal keeps track of the number up to which it has executed an update hook. By the way, you should give it a doc comment because that doc comment, by the way, is what um, will show up. It will show up in the, um, when you run the, the update, it will show up as uh, help text to tell you the, what the update does. So now we have to do exactly what, what this schema change did. And that means we have to copy this schema change and then say db add field to the table and the name of the table of course is to do. And the name of the field is uid and then the spec, spec is the array that specifies the new column, which is from here to here. So I'll just copy that. All right. So this is how we are. Uh, by the way, I pressed Control Shift F. Let me undo. And now I'm pressing Control Shift F to reformat in NetBeans. So it did the reformatting. Uh, also, we should call db add 
index again with to do table and the name of the index will be UID index and the specification is the list of col columns which is UID once you do these things now watch what happens if I say rush update DB or better I mean another way of doing this if if I go to um, I do have to enable uh, wait one second let me make sure that so if I go to update uh, if I go to the list of modules okay it doesn't say anything um, so since I have I, I have disabled the update module let me enable it yeah the update manager is disabled if I enable it then I will start seeing updates suddenly so if I click on update it says there are no updates but the database updates uh, well they don't even show up here so yeah let me um, run the update from the command line rush update db because I gave this documentation comment on my update hook which is right here that's why that documentation comment is showing up so it's saying uh, do you want to apply the pending updates you say yes and as you apply those pending updates you will see that in the database the structure of the database changes oops doesn't change actually hold on why Hmm. So why does it not change? I think we just need to refresh the entire database, like reload the whole thing. And now when we look at the to-do, yes, right there, the UID, UID column is present. So yeah, so I, I made a mistake. I, I did not refresh the database properly, but yes, it the update worked. All right, so now let's recap very quickly. Whenever you want to make a change to the schema, you obviously change hook schema, but you don't stop there you have to correspondingly also create an update hook that makes the same changes that the schema the schema has changed in right and anybody who installs your module or enables it for the first time after this point will get this to do schema the hook schema but then those people who already have this module enabled and they already have the old schema they will see that you have introduced a new hook update that they have not executed and they will end up executing this hook update using rush update db right yeah like rush update db and that will cause them to change their schema all right all right so now we have um, our install file is now creating the extra column for the user UID who owns the to do. So next we need to actually change our module to start using this. So the first thing we have to do is when we are creating the, the new uh, to do we have to store the UID of the currently logged in user along with everything else so here so we are storing title and created let's also store the UID and for UID we simply take the current users UID but where is current user well the current user actually stored in a global variable called dollar user and because this is PHP you have to actually indicate a global variable with a prefix of global you declare it and now you have access to the current user's UID. So now when the user, when, when the to-do will be created, it will be created with the UID of the user who is logged in. So let me show you that. Right now if I refresh, there are to-do one, two, and three, but the UID is always zero. So therefore if I, but now with the change, the code change that we have made, we will be able to we will be able to um, st 
store the UID. So now we go to my to-do list, create a new to-do. Let's call it to-do number four. And I say create new. So once it has been stored, we go back into the database, refresh the database window. And as you can see, the UID has been stored. So that's, that's good. Um, if I do this as a different user, so dash user login, uh, user ID number two, and uh, let me use this uh, link and I'm going to open an incognito window uh, and then paste my login link. So now I'm logging as this other user. Unfortunately, it is still showing all the to-dos irrespective of their UID, which is fine. Let's just create the to-do first. If I say um, other to-do one, create new, it shows up in the list, but more importantly, in the database, it should have a UID of two, which it does. Great. Next problem we have is that everybody is able to see everybody else's to-dos. So that's not good. Um, in order to filter each user so that the, each user sees their own to-do, what we will do is we will f show them the, based on their UID, but more importantly, we will actually change the path of this to-do list itself. So what if we we have we could get a new tab here in my account if there was a new tab that showed your to-dos that would be nice which is entirely possible all you have to do is you have to make it a, because this edit and view are part of user slash UID you just make it a part in that path user percent to do so now this be becomes we can rename this to my to-dos as it, this will become the tab, tabs title. The page callback remains the same, but page argument has to change. Page arguments will are going to be array and one. What does one mean? Basically, percentage sign is a placeholder and the first placeholder is given a number of zero. Second one is one, this is third, three. So when we say one, it means give me the value that corresponds to this position number one, whatever value there is, which will be the UID of the user. So that's why we say page callback to-do list will, will get a parameter of uh, user ID, whatever user ID will be here. So th for that, I have to actually go to the to-do list and add a parameter, UID parameter. And now, since I'm getting the UID, and we, I'm fetching it using to do get to do, I have to pass in the dollar UID. Then I follow up to this place, I have to take the parameter UID. And now, we will say to the, we'll replace the DB query with uh, the proper way to do um, Drupal queries, which is you said DB select name of the table which is to do then the list of fields that you are fetching that will be to do is the name of the table and then the list of fields will be id and title okay and then most importantly we have to put a condition and the condition will be that the uid is equal to The provided dollar UID. Then finally, you so let me just break this down into its chained method calls. Execute, and finally, fetch all. So this way, I will have a list of all. All to do's. The problem now is that the to do get to do's is uh, oh let me let me just get one for now. Hmm. Let me not get everything else. Just let me get only the ID. Sorry, only the title. And then I say fetch 
then I go back to saying fetch column. So it will fetch one single column. Um, let's see if this works. Oh, before I do that, I have to say uh, user percent to do page callback page arguments access callback is still true, which is okay for now. Um, let's see if this works. We have to clear all flush all caches and of course the path to do is not valid anymore I have to go to my user account and I should have seen a new tab here of course I didn't because I have to change the type of the menu item to menu local task so when you make something a local task it becomes a tab so let me flush caches one more time. And there you go. As soon as I cl clear those caches, I am seeing my to do's and it shows only to do number four. Same thing if I go to my other user and then I go to my to do's, I see other to do one. The unfortunate thing here is that while this part is correct that it's showing you your own to do's. Um, the issue is that if you were to change this user number from two to one, now suddenly you can see other people's to do's. This is in this case, the admin users to do's. So that's not very secure, obviously. Um, you can see your own to do's and then you can see others to do's just by changing the number there. So to prevent that, we have to change this access callback. So first, let us uh, introduce a new permission. To introduce a new permission, you have to implement hook, hook permission, and we will say new. The new permission will be an array. So permission hook permission is supposed to return an array, each one being a permission in itself. So we say access to do's is the machine name of the permission. And then we have to give some information about the permission. And that will be a title and the title will be access to do's. This is the human readable part of it. And then we say description um, able to create and view on to do's create edit and view let's say that okay so let's say this is the permission then we can say that this user should be able to do this only the so just say user access user underscore access is a built-in drupal api function so that's your access callback and the access argument arguments will be an array the first uh, parameter to that access user access um, function call will be access to do's so basically we are saying call the function user access with this parameter called access to do and it will check if the current user has that access let's save it and flush all caches. Okay, we got some some issues. Mm. Undefined offset zero. Access arguments. Access callback. Access to do's. Look permission. Access to do's. So let me check again if I reload this. There is a problem here. What is the problem? Okay, yes, I see the problem. I misspelled arguments. Argue. Arguments, yes. That should work a little better. Let's try it again. Yeah, so this says every cl cache cleared. Now if I go to the other user, my not 
authorized to access this page. Why? Because we have introduced a new permission and you go to people permissions and look for to do's in there. There it is, access to do's. Uh, administrator of course has access to everything, but anonymous, I mean authenticated users should be able to also access at least his own to do's. So once I save permissions on this, the authenticated user is now able to access their own to do's. That still doesn't prevent the authenticated user from going into someone else's uh, to do list like that user one to do and then user two is able to access to user one's to do's. That's a problem. To solve that problem, we have to change this. We cannot use user access anymore. We will have to add our own um, access control function called to do underscore access. And to do underscore access basically looks at the current user, okay, which means you use the global dollar user. You say if the current user has user access of administer content, which means the user is sort of like an administrator where who can administer anyone else's content then just return true you're fine i mean should allow them but before that we should check if the yeah that's fine the other then you should check if the current user has access to access to do's permission and if they don't meaning say if this returns false then return false I mean fail right away finally you check that the UID that they are trying to access which is this this users UID so we just put the percent UID here so dollar UID to do access will be now you don't need this fixed hard-coded string you instead need the number that is at position one that's the number you want so now you check that the this basically is telling whose to do's you are trying to access and there you say if a dollar user uid is equal to uid then then everything is good you are trying to access your own own permission uh, your own to do so that's good so then or in other words let's just compare these two and, and return that as the result so you could just say return make sure that these two are same if they are same then access is true if they're false if they're not same then access is false let's see if this works obviously we have to clear cache special caches uh, here I am administrator user so I don't have any restrictions I can see my own and as well I, I can see other users but this other user is not uh, authorized why it seems that hmm to do access uh oh sorry I did not change the access from user access to to do access. That was my problem. Let me check, fix that. And now I clear cache again. So if I go back to other users, so now the user is able to access his own to do's, right? That's good. And let's see if he's able to access user one's to do. No, he's not. Excellent. So now we have implemented proper access control by saying my access callback is my own custom function and it takes an argument of the number at position one, which would be the user ID. So with this, we are implementing proper access control. All right, so now let's, let's test a new to do. We say, other to do 
too. It, I think it created, but it tried to redirect me to a non-existent page. So if we go to my account again, look at our to-dos. Yes, we got the new to-do, but the redirection is incorrect. So let's correct that. After creating, instead of getting cre uh, redirected to just slash to-do, we need to be redirected to uh, user slash dollar user uid to do so current users to do list of course we uh, we we have already declared dollar user right here so let's see if this still works other to do three okay that works much better and uh, we can test it for this user as well mm. this is anonymous user if I go to my account as admin and look at my to do's and I say you know to do five and yes I see to do five very good so now at this point we still have a few small things to take care of one is that our uh, list of to do's is not very clean looking in the sense that it's uh, it would be nice if it was a table so let's make it a table first to make it a table, we will do Drupal theming. Right now, we are not doing proper theming. We are just using an existing theme, whatever was available to us. We simply take HTML and this UL item list, item lists. So let's do real theming, which is what if I wanted to show the ID and I wanted to show a proper table for the list of to-dos. To so now, while getting the to-dos, we will start fetching not just the title, but also the ID. Okay, so that's the ID. Then, um, we, instead of fetching a single column, we will fetch the entire list. Uh, I mean, the whole uh, object as an object, not just a single column. So this will start returning uh, to-dos by there as objects. Now, once we receive to-dos, as objects, we can let's uh, return a our page. We should return as array where we create a new. We say theme this as to do underscore list. Now this is interesting because we don't have a theming hook called to do underscore list. We are about to create it. But let's fa pass it parameters called items and the items are going to be this right so now we can delete everything else that's it that's the only thing so we have simplified the our code quite a bit instead of creating an item list and HTML link and all those things we just reduce it to one thing which is a single render array where theme hook name is to-do list and the parameter that we are passing in it is called to-do underscore to-do get to-do. So it's basically receiving from the database function call. The question is, how will this get rendered? There is nothing to render it. There is no one who knows how to render it. That's where hook theme comes in. So we say implements hook underscore theme. And to in implement it, we say function to do underscore theme. As you know, whenever you are implementing a hook, you must replace the word hook with the machine name of the module that you are writing. All right, so now we say re return an array of theming hooks. And what we return is an array where the key is to do underscore list. And the value is, and the value is um, what template file and variables. So first we say that we will implement this um, theming hook as a template, and the name of the template will be to do dash list, which means it will translate to to do dash list dot tpl dot php, and then the variables that it receives are basically the items and the value of that items by default is empty array which means an empty list of items 
Let's start with this. Once you implement a hook theme like that, you can now, whatever the theming hook name you declared here, you can now start using it here. Of course, this won't work because we don't have a te template for to-do list. Let's create that. Right click new empty file to do dash list dot tpl dot php. So that's the list. Um, I'm going to just copy and paste from my prepared notes. So here it is. What we are doing is we create an, a PHP file. This is some documentation to tell what variables are available. So we have dollar items, which is same as this items here. And we should also declare a second one, which is the title or the caption. Okay, let's declare one. And that will be title. You must declare each variable, otherwise it won't be injected into the template. And the value, default value is null, which means if you don't specify it, there is nothing. But you must still declare it. If you don't declare it, it will not be, get injected into this template. So here in the template we say that there is a top link create to do at the top and then if title is specified it's not empty then use it as the caption of the table create the table you have a t head to do edit delete these are edit and delete operations which we will implement uh, very soon but for now uh, remember we have an incoming uh, variable called dollar items all we do is we create a T body and we for each iterate over dollar items as item and then create a TR for each of them. And in, in those TRs we have TDs which display the title and then edit link which is to do slash to do ID slash edit or delete link which is to do slash to do ID slash delete. Okay, so this is what a TPL PHP looks like. So it's basically a PHP file that is used as a template and the, the name of this file is to do dash list dot tpl dot php it's in the same directory as the um it's in the same directory as the, the module itself okay now at this point we should have something working let's see if i reload it doesn't work because hook theme has just been introduced. So we need, we need to clear cache. And there you go. Look, we introduced the to do. We introduced a template file for to do's and it's showing. Of course, the edit URI path doesn't work. Delete also doesn't work. That we will fix very soon. Let me first recap what we just did. Instead of piecing together the HTML uh, through item list and uh, link and those different um, rendering render arrays, we combine them all into a single theme hook called to do underscore list. We supply data to it using this. Now we can actually give it a title as well by the way while we are at it we could say title so right now this has no title we can give it a caption saying uh, my to do list if I do that as soon as I do that I reload and then my to do list shows up as a caption of the table so so we are returning this render array from our uh, page callback and uh, that render array is getting themed using this theming template. Okay. And the template file is right here. Template file makes use of dollar title and dollar items. There you go. Very clean, very clean. Uh, with that, let's turn our attention to the edit and delete functions. To implement the edit functionality, what we have to do is we have to create a another route in hook menu. So let's uh, just like we have to do new and 
we'll create another one called to do percent sign edit and this will be edit to do Drupal get form yes and then to do edit also we forgot to set the access callback right to user access so you are allowed to create um, to do's if you have permission called um, access to do's yeah. so this secures that thing but when you're editing a to do you're editing an existing one and now the problem is slightly different you will see pretty soon if you are editing a to do it better be your to do right so you cannot use user access for it that means we have to we'll get to it <laughs> we'll get to it let's first take care of how to do the to do edit so we just uh, take the the create and create submit functions and duplicate them because they are very similar edit and create are similar so we say to do edit is this and somebody pr provides you with remember this is to do number so we just say we are doing to do edit so somebody provide us, provides us with to do id that you have to understand how this works page callback is drupal get form page arguments is to do edit and then you additionally give an extra argument of one one means the positional parameter number one contextual parameter number one so it takes this whatever the id is there it will pass that to duplicate form first argument to do edit second argument this and when to do edit is called it will have dollar form dollar form state and then the value that was here the id of the to do so that means to do edit gets a to do id and we get the to do out of that by saying db select from table to do fields are to do table and the fields are array id and title and then condition is that the to do id is equal to to do id dollar to do id finally we execute it and then we fetch the object that's your to do once you have fetched the to do you basically say here's the text field the name of the item the to do item is and then you give that as the default value this is forms api in forms api when you want to specify the default value of a text field or any other field you say pound sign default value the value is going to be to do objects title field also there is another problem which is so when you get around to actually handling the edit submit you have this object you want to update the title so how instead of us uh, insert you have to do update and then the fields are going to be title with its new value dollar title and what dollar title is coming from form state values title so that's good only problem is we have to specify a condition we have to say that condition is that the id of the to do is dollar to do underscore id but that's not available so to make that available you have to store it in the form how do you store it you say form create a field called to do id and 
the way you store a field on the server side without ever exposing it to the client is to say type is value. So this is a different special type of form field where you say type value, it never makes it to the client browser, but it's stored on the server and it gets restored in the form state or the dollar form every time. So you say dollars. So type is value and the value is a default value. I don't know which one. I think value is dollar to do get take the to do object and get the ID out of it. Or I can just store the to do ID. Actually, this is simpler. Okay. The same value will be available at the other end while you're handling the submit. You can say to do ID is dollar form state values to do ID. Okay. So that's how this works. So let's see if this will actually work. Let me edit. Oh, first let me flush all caches. And then edit. Oh, it shows me a form. Ah, it says create new, which is obviously wrong. Shouldn't say create new. Let's go back to the form. Instead of create new, we'll use the word save here. So when we save, it says save. Now let's change it from five to do five to to do five a save it. And look, it successfully updated the to do. We can try to do that for to do four save, and it became to four a. Very nice. Now um, there is a problem though. So this was uh, to do number four, and this user is admin. To do number four is editable for admin, but for this other user, to do number is five, and you can change that obviously, and it works. But what if he said, okay, you know what? I'm going to try to, as a non-admin user, I'm going to try to change it, change someone else's to do, to do number four. So if I try to do that, it's allowing me. And I can make it to do for B, save it. And here you won't see it, but in admin users uh, to do list, it became for B, which was modified by user number two. That's very bad. That's a security hole. To fix that security hole, we have to change the, how to do access works. We have to see a user's UID has to match the TIDs. But before I do that, there's something else I need to fix. I would prefer that Drupal provided me with the to-do objects instead of the to-do ID object. That's actually very easily doable. You go into this to route Instead of saying percent, you say percent to do. When you say percent to do, this particular argument will get translated through a loader called to do underscore load. So that means you can now write a function called to do underscore load, which takes a to do ID and then returns the object, which is pretty easy because you already have this. So we can just delete this and put it here and simply return given a to do ID, which is same as this, load the to do object, fetch it and return it. That's what it does. This to do load will be called from here, percent to do because it's percent, it's not just percent, it's percent to do which makes it call this to do underscore load with the value of the percent holder placeholder which will be the id of the to do and it will return the to do object which in turn will be passed into the page callbacks arguments therefore we no longer are expecting a to do id we are actually expecting a real to do and that means here we have to change this from to do underscore id to to, to do arrow ID. Once you do that, let's see what happens. So 
something didn't work. Ah, uh, we have to flush caches. Okay, yeah, once we flush the cache, everything is fine. Because remember, we modified hook menu. So we have to flush cache, at least the menu cache. And that works nicely. Change this to 5B. That also works nicely. We still have the other problem where non-admin users can modify the to-dos of admin. That's the next thing we will fix. The way we fix that is we say, remember we have our own to-do access. We will say that the we have to actually use to-do access in more versatile manner. Um, when we are viewing, we will have to say access arguments are the operation, which is the operation of viewing. And then the second argument will be the to-do ID. Okay, But we can check, we can say to-do here. So now it loads the to-do. Oops, sorry, 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 sorry. This is the user ID, not to do ID. My bad, my bad. So when to do access checks for view operation, so the first argument of to do access becomes dollar op. Okay. And now we say if dollar op is equal to view, if somebody is trying to view, then this is this ID is the UID. So we say uh, return, you're trying to view the to do's of various uh, users. If that user is the user's UID is your own UID, then you're good. So we are saying if the operation is view, then check compare the user's ID with the ID of the user whose to do's you are trying to test, yeah, view, view. On the other hand, if the operation is update, then things are slightly different. Because in case of uh, edit and update, you change the access callback to to do access, and then the uh, arguments will be update operation followed by the object that is the to do itself position one so that object is what will be supplied so it's not no longer just the id this is really the object so we say if the id which is the to do object really it's, its uid owner is same as the current users uid Oops, I made a mistake here, I should say. Okay, let's change it. Okay, so in case of view, the ID signifies the UID. In case of update, the ID is actually the to-do. So we should probably something call it to-do or UID, <laughs> let's call it this. So that's, it can be either. So that's to do or UID and this is to do or UID. In case of updates, it's a to do. In case of you, it's the UID. And let's return it. Let's see if this works. Obviously, we have to flush cache. So if I try to to four feet into 4D, it still works. But remember, as user ID 2, this is my anonymous window, as user ID 2, I was able to edit to do number four, which hopefully now, oops, I'm still able to, that's a problem. Why am I able to? Let's see number four, who is the owner of number four, 4D, to do 4D. Yeah, that's, that's admin users to do and, and on this other user non admin user should not be able to edit it so there, this is still not right so we say if um, the user non admin user has administered content they won't 
uh, if they have don't have access to this of course they won't they'll be rejected right away so it's the update operation update and where the uid matches uh, uid of the to do matches this uh, i think we made a mistake there so let's see op is equal to update is it yes to do access access arguments one let's check what happens here uh, let's uh, flush cache again and try to reload I have been hoping that this would return false and uh, you know deny access but it is not denying access so we have to see why mm -hmm. <laughs> to do for edit Why is that happening? Reload. So his own to do, of course, he's able to edit. That's nothing new, as they should. But why is this user able to edit other people's to dos? Let's ch see why. Oh, now I see where the problem is. Instead of comparing the two, I just ended up. Uh, assigning it I I had it like this I should have had it as double equal to to compare that was the issue let us now if I reload it says access denied excellent um, it's also saying there's no UID property for to do access what's going on there so according to oh to do or UID doesn't have UID property it's a little bit of a problem let's check how about this user admin user admin user is okay but that's because admin user no, no rules really apply let me flush all caches back to the list of to do's for non-admin user right edit yeah so this is not working looks like access callback has to do access and then argument that it is receiving is not what we think it is so let's to debug that let's dpm to do or uid to do or uid okay let's try this um, if i huh in this scenario to do our UID is called four times wow why is it called so many times when I try to edit it it's again called four times that's too many times so I don't know why it's called that much oh one more thing that UID is never loaded that's a serious problem so we have to go to the to do loader to do underscore load and make sure UID gets loaded and I think that will take care of all all our problems mm -hmm. yeah now UID is loaded we can remove so the our our mistake was that we did not in our to do load function we were loading ID and title but not UID which we have just fixed we can get rid of the DPM now and back in non admin session this works uh, make one B works edit it again change it from five to four remember to do number four belongs to admin and says access denied excellent so it's able to deny us access we can do the now at this point we are able to edit with proper security let's do delete also which means when we click on this it should provide us a, a form to delete that's very easy we can simply duplicate the edit form copy paste and wherever it said edit we just change it to delete but there is one small change we will get to it delete okay so the problem is 
that when you delete you want to say you want to give a confirmation and say that are you sure you want to delete this particular um, item so we will have two submit buttons one will be called yes or confirm the other one will be called cancel and then in I guess form value will we will continue to store the to do ID as a value but we, instead of showing title as editable we simply say uh, message we show a message type markup and we say and the markup value is something like are you sure you want to delete and then we specify the name of the to do so I'm what I'm doing is I'm using T function with a percent placeholder percent placeholder means show it as italicized show that value so placeholder will get substituted by saying placeholder given an array argument and that placeholder is the key the value of the placeholder is the value so that will be the title hmm. so hopefully this will work that's the to do delete and then when to do delete is submitted but remember there are two buttons here uh, oh sorry this should be confirm and cancel so when the confirm button button is pressed one thing should happen and cancel is press something else should happen so we need to give them two separate um, callbacks so when submit is done remember submit is an array of handlers it's not a single head so we, we specify an array and it will be to do delete confirm and the other one similar but separate will be to do delete cancel cancel will simply take you back to the list of a list of um, to do's so confirm when somebody is confirming we simply say uh, we just say we get the to, to do ID and we call db delete specify the name of the table so here you are once again learning the database api the database abstraction layer of drupal delete uh, from this table where condition is that the id matches uh, to do id and then execute it so when the return value from execute equals 1 if tolerate val is equal to 1 which means it deleted 1 we say Drupal set message to do deleted that's a success message else Drupal set message failed to delete to do and then you have an error qualification to that message okay so this will do confirmation similarly there is a um, you might cancel it in which case you don't do any of these things you simply say redirect back to list of to do's and uh, this is not confirmed this is cancel that's it to do confirm and to do oh sorry to do delete confirm and to do delete cancel let's see if this works keep in mind that at this point we did not attach the submit handler to the form but we attach them to individual buttons that's a that's a new thing that we are learning it seems so let's see if this works clear cache reload
code. No. Okay, it looks like we, oh. <laughs> I never bothered to create the delete um, menu item. So to do, percent to do, delete. And we will call, the title will be delete to do, get form to do, delete. And the to do access, the operation will be, instead of update, it becomes to delete. So in my to do access function, I have to check if you're allowed to update or delete. I mean, if the operation is update or the operation is delete. In both the cases, the effect is the same. You have to check that the UID owner of the to do is the UID of the currently logged in user. So let's um, try to see if this works. Flash all caches. Go to the non-admin user and try to reload. Here we go. Delete to do. Are you sure you want to delete this thing called other to do one B? I say cancel. Oopsie. Undefined variable user in line 152. So 152. Okay, yeah, I have to have a global for the user. Yeah, we have to declare this global variable user for both of these guys here in confirm as well as in cancel. All right, so let's try it again. Reload, cancel. Okay, that's the listing. Cancel, oh, delete, cancel back here. And if I try to delete and confirm the deletion, it's gone. Now if I try to delete someone else's, like number four, to do number four, if I say delete, and I say, okay, delete to do number four, it says, no, you're not allowed. Why? Because the UI, when it went to to do access um, function, which is here, it checked, do you have a permission to administer content? No. Do you have permission to access to do? Yes. So then moved on, check the operation to up, it happened to be delete. Oh, I have a big mistake again here. It should be like that. If the operation is delete, then you check the to do's UID and the user's UID. Are the same? Yes, they are. So you're allowed. If they're not, you're not allowed. Great. So at this point, we have um, most of the things done. We have we have a theming hook there. We have a theming template there. We have proper user access control function, which is this to do access. And we have insert, update, delete functionality in, in here. So, and the listing of course. Now let's do one more thing before we call it a day today, which is what if we wanted a block? What if in my user or various places on my sidebar I wanted a block that listed my to-dos? So we will basically implement hook block info. Hook block info and also hook block view. So let's say function to do block info and you return let's just say dollar blocks return dollar blocks but you build dollar blocks first by saying dollar blocks and then the machine name of the block will be to do underscore list and it's an array that has a few keys one is the uh, the keys are there is I think title is it yeah I think title or is it info yeah info exactly you say info which will be the title and that will be 
or whatever that happens to be really mm. yeah so the the title will be uh, to do list of the current user right so that's what the block will show and we, we can there are if you look at the documentation of hook block info on api.drupal.org you'll see various other options the one we will use is caching policy and then we'll say this because each user has a different list of to do's therefore the block should be uh, cacheable only per user so there is fortunately um, drupal cache per user constant so this way it's cacheable per user next we have to implement hook block view so now when hook block view is implemented the to do block view you are passed in a delta delta is basically the machine name of the block if we just say hey you're asking me to paint a block well I am going to switch on the delta and say case which is misspelled a case to-do list when it happens to be to-do list I have something to do and that is return an a render array or an array no not a render array but a block object with subject so you'll have a subject which will be the title of the block and content which will be the body of the block this we can make a theming array a render array rather with a found theme attribute and that will be to do underscore list and found um, what's the word I'm looking for items that will be same as uh, what we do here correct so this is the uid of course you have to know the uid and that will be we can just say global dollar user and then fetch the uid from global dollar user right so this the subject will be my to-do list that will be the title of the block and the body of the block will be the rendered list of to-dos so let's see if this works let's flush all caches and structure blocks should show us a new to-do thingies here to-do list of the current user let's configure it in Bartik, we will put it in the sidebar first. We won't override the title. And we will say, show on every page, I guess. Save block. And now, when we reload, on the left, we see a to-do list. But when we log out, we still see to-do list. This is the anonymous user's to-do list. So that's not good. So we could uh, basically disable it by going to the configuration of the block and in sidebar first to do list we say okay show it only for authenticated user which of course every administrator is also authenticated so if we reload it disappears only when we log in again brush user login number two user id two and I say copy link address try to open it in anonymous window now I have to do's on the left these are this particular users to do's okay that basically shows you how to use how to declare and define your own custom blocks
So it's been a long journey. We have successfully been able to create very um, interesting modules. Um, this whole module to do module is basically a demonstration of CRUD operations. We are able to create, read, update and delete to do's. And we are also able to um, con do access control over this. So we have our own access control function. We further created our own theming, hook theme and a theming template with some parameters that we pass in from the render array. And then we are actually in the template, we are we control the HTML that comes out. So overall we have a pretty good setup. Um, at this point we should stop for this session and uh, see you next time. We will do even more interesting and more advanced Drupal module development in this series, Drupal ca Crash Course. This was the part three, and then we'll continue the series further. Keep doing more Drupal module development. See you soon.